Hi, Matt. Steve Lee, Ben Ranson from Sky Sports News. Uh, Matt, if we can obviously start with you, I'm sure it's been a bit of a whirlwind the last few weeks, I suppose the burning question. Why specifically did you sort of decide that Charlton Athletic was the club you wanted to take over? Um, I mean, you know, I said it the other day, I said the other day in my interview, it's a club that's got a lot of her heritage. Um, it's obviously been promoted back to the Championship, which was obviously a lot more attractive for us than in League One. Um, we knew about the fan base, we, we knew about the history of the club. Uh, we didn't realise exactly how passionate the fans were, obviously, until the announcement came out. Um, but yeah, you know, he's got the foundations to, to go on to be a, a really, really successful club. You know, we've got a great infrastructure, great young manager, um, a great director of football. Um, they've done a great job up until now, you know, finding the likes of, you know, bringing Lyle Taylor in, Macaulay Bond, we've got a great academy system, you know, Steve Avery down there, you know, continually, year after year, bringing in players, you know, that are playing in our first team, uh, we're enjoying them, you know, and ultimately they do, they do move on, you know, but that's, as I said in my interview, it's part of the model. So, yeah, for us it was, you know, when I, when I sat down with the board uh, and I identified this and, and I, I laid out to Tanoom, uh, and, and Jonathan Heller, uh, just the the endless opportunities for the club. You know, they bought into it straight away. It being in a, Lon a London location, um, yeah. So, yeah. Tenoon's a figure, obviously, we've read a little bit about, but probably we don't know as much as we'd like. Can you tell us a bit more about the sort of character he is? How much he likes football? How much he's watched Charlton? Yeah, he, 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 as you, you've seen from his, his social media, he, you know, he gets behind the team. Um, he oversees a lot of businesses. He, he oversees over 60 businesses. All of them are successful, you know, from energy, development, um, obviously being based in the Middle East. Uh, that he, he's seen what's gone on with you know, the likes of Manchester City uh, and the project that's gone on there. And, and I think for him, he's kind of... He's seen that and he, he wants to do it. You know, you've seen, you've seen his videos, you've seen his tweets... He gets behind with football. Everybody kind of has a love for football, you know, and it's it's no different for him. So yeah, he's passionate. Um, from from the conversations I've had with him, uh, and told him about the club. Obviously, he's done his he's done his own research into the club. You know, he is quite knowledgeable about the club, um, and yeah, so he's he's really excited to get behind this project. If I can ask you a question about the man sat to your left. Yes, of course. Uh, you can imagine this is coming. Uh, I thought that would be the first one, to be honest. <laughs> I thought I'd warm you up. Yeah. Um, Lee's contract, obviously. Yeah. Is there any update? How close are you? Do you still plan to sort it out after the transfer window? Um, we had the conversation yesterday, and obviously I've, I've seen what, what, what Lee said, um, and obviously the board have taken note of that. You know, and I've brought that forward. Uh, his agent's coming to the game uh, on Saturday. Uh, he actually uh, received an offer this morning. Um, so myself and Rob will will sit down uh, and we'll, we'll hammer it out. You know, I've made no secret from day one. Uh, Lee was an integral part of why we kind of came into this. You know, he's young, uh, you know, in 18 months, where he's taken the club, you know, from League One mid-table to, to here, it, it's fantastic on the resources he's had. Um, and obviously his backroom staff, Steve, I just, we feel that with our backing and our resources, you, you know, it, listen, clubs came in for him. I know that, he knows that, everybody knows that. It was widely reported. Uh, I told him I wanted him to stay. Um, so, yeah, for me, it is a priority getting it done. And I honestly believe that me, me and Rob will sort it out. And I think... We'll, we'll, we'll get it done. Listen, it's only good for the club going forward. You know, as he rightly said, c players that he's meeting with, they want to know, you know, Lee is top of the football and part of this club. Yeah? So they want to know, well, if you've only got six months left on your contract, where does that leave me? If I'm committing to the club for three and a half years, you know, you could be gone in six months. And I get it. I do get it. You know, at the time, I kind of felt, you know, th there's a lot of things to do. You know, in an ideal situation, we would have come in, um, you know, mid-October. I would have been able to finalise you know, Lee's contract, Lyle's contract, get to the January window, push on, strengthen, uh, and obviously 
stay in, stay in the championship. That's, that's a priority. Obviously, you know, fast forward, we are where we are. Um, but no, that's, that's my main priority now. Getting Lee tied down and then obviously we can move on. We can, we can bring in the players that we've identified to, to bring in. If I can ask you then, uh, obviously that's a big development for, for your future. How pleased are you that it's come around like that and worked out that way and how much you, I expect, looking forward to staying at Charlton and being part of this project? The, the most important thing for me is that the club moves forward and whether it's me or somebody else, the most important person is the manager for stability for the football club. Um, like I said in the interview this morning, that I don't know how many players I've sat down with and their first question, like Steve will be able to tell you as well, their first question is, what's happening with you? So I don't want that to be the case. I want to be here for, for years to come. Everybody knows how I feel about the, the, the club. I, like I started here as a, as a kid and then now I'm manager. And have we done well? Yes, of course we have. To, to turn it around, when I first walked through the club, uh, walked through the doors, the, the, the club was in a bad place. and No one can, can deny that. But the most important thing for me is, yes, I want to sign a contract. Um, the sooner the better for me. Uh, the chairman is saying that a new offer's gone through. I've just found that out because my, my agent's in, uh, is in LA at the moment and, and I've been at work all, all morning. So so I will sit down, and well, not sit down, I will speak to the agent later on once I, I know what's what. And, and if we ain't quite there, I don't know what it is, but we have Saturday. Um, that's why I said Saturday is a big day for regarding the contracts because they're both going to be sitting in the same room and the most important thing is, is for me is that, that we can come to an agreement because I want to be part of this journey because we finally have some backing. We, we have the chairman and, and his group that's come in and, and are talking positive things and want to take the club forward. So everything that I'm hearing is positive and I want to be part of this journey. We've, we've come on a journey so far. I want to be part of the next part of this journey. So I'm excited. Matt, just one more from me, I promise. Um, Lyle Taylor, he was another one of your priorities when you came in, you said, to time down to a new contract. Yeah. Now, since you've been here, I understand a, a contract's been offered, he's rejected it, it's now off the table. Has there been any development? Could that change before the end of the window, or are you looking to sell him? Of course. Listen, it's all, it could always change, but that, that's ultimately down to the player. Um, it, from the opening statement was... To tie Lee down, to tie Lyle down, and you know that's not changed. Um, we made the offer uh, quite a few weeks ago. Um, I met with the players' representative. We had discussions, and it, it, the ball was in in, in the representative court. And I felt that for, for the, the, the long term and what I was trying to do at the club and the, the model that I was trying to implement, I felt it was a fair offer. I thought it was a very good offer. It was, it was way above the model. Listen, I get, you know, the players that we're trying to bring in now, you know, are not obviously our best players. You know, there will be marquee signings and there will be contracts where we have to go over and above to keep players in the door, you know, bring in players that we feel are going to, you know, strengthen the team. You know, as, as, as Lee mentioned yesterday on the phone to me, you know, when he was at Newcastle, they had Alan Shearer. You know, so the reputation for us, where you know we were at a certain level, it, it, listen, it's it's a new it's a new dawn here. So, as I said in my, my initial interview, I'm trying to build sensibly, build sustainably. But ultimately, I, I won't go over and above to anything and commit the long-term stability of the club to something that, we, that, that isn't sustainable. So, in, long story short, I felt that it was in the interest of the club to withdraw the offer. The, the door's not shut. You know, the player, he, he, did, he did have a day or so. The representative had a day or so. I, I was down the training ground. The player was down the training ground. He could have come and spoke to me. Um, but like I said, the, door, the door's not shut. Do I want to sell him? No, I don't want to sell him. Does Lee want to sell him? Does the heck? You know, that's going to do nothing for the club. So, at the, you know, 
he's our player, and if he stays till the end of the season, brilliant. If he comes to me and says, right, let's get around the table, let, let's let's do this, you know, like I did with Rob, let's get in, let's do this. I want to be part of this. Then yeah, of course, my door's open. Lee's door's open. Matt, good afternoon. Welcome to Charlton, belatedly. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Were you tempted by any other clubs with your East Street investments to um, go on board elsewhere? Or was this Charlton always the priority for you? So was I tempted? It's been widely reported that I've looked at clubs over the years. Um, obviously, I was, in, I was an agent until 2014. I came out of that. Um, I've been over in the Middle East um, and with the guys at East Street it, it, for them it was Charlton or nothing they wanted a London club um, they wanted a club that they felt that they could move from one place to another i.e. obviously League One Championship to listen, the Premier League You know, I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to get to the Premier League in X amount of years. I can't do that. But ultimately, every owner's ambition is to get to the Premier League. If I didn't have that ambition, you know, if Lee didn't have that ambition to manage in the Premier League, you know, what's the point? So, yeah, we've looked, I've looked at clubs in a personal capacity on behalf of investors. However, East Street Investments as a collective, myself, His Excellency Tanoon, uh, and Jonathan Heller, the only club that we've looked at has uh, been Charlton. Yeah. Hi all. Um, you've asked for all the fans to come back after yeah. after the relationship turned sour with Roland. Are there any guarantees or insurances you can give to those fans that it won't happen again, or or, or there'll be a falling out between board and fans, or or the or the relationship between the fans and the board will go sour, similar to how we did with Roland. There's no guarantees in life. You, you can't you can't make any guarantees. What I what I would say is, you know, I've been open and transparent from the outset. Uh, I've been visible. Um, I've been at all the games. Um, I will make decisions down the line that I feel are in the best interest of the club going forward. However. The fans or whoever may not feel that's that's a, that's a situation, but if I feel you know, I'll sit down with my board, with His Excellency, with Jonathan Heller. You know, if it's a footballing matter, I'll sit down with Lee. Uh, you know, let's take Lyle as an example. If someone came along and offered a ridiculous amount, then I would sit down with Lee and say, "Listen, this is a businessing, this is a business decision. However, I want your input." And then it's down to me and Lee to kind of go about. You know, he's obviously going to say, I want Lyle to stay. But ultimately, I need to look at the long-term stability of the club. So fans might not like it, but ultimately, I will sit here and I will say, this is a decision, and I feel this is right for the club. And that's, you know, if that, as long as I do that and I can kind of say, this is why I feel it's, it's, it's justifiable, you know, if the relationship... I can't say where the relationship's going to go. All I can do is do my best to be open and transparent. You know, I try and engage. I've got meetings with the supporters trust lined up, the local council. You know, reconnecting with the community is something that is so high on my priority list. You know, the disconnect between the fans and the previous owners, you know, it, it, was, it was obvious to see. You saw the protests, etc. cetera. No, nobody wants that. You know, we're here to move the club forward. You know, we want to be successful and we want to do it together. The fans, the team, the board, you know, as a collective, because ultimately moving as one is better than moving as three or four. Um, you determined that this ain't just going to happen overnight. Like, it's going to take time. Because if you think, in, in, in just the time I've been here, it's gone from here to there very quickly then you can't just jump from there to there. It, it's not possible. We've done well to get to that, that, the situation we're in now, but I don't think it's possible to keep <coughs> jumping that big a jump. So it's going to take time. Like you, You're trying to rebuild something that was broken for a long time. So the most important thing is that we all come together 
to move it gradually. Because if you try to jump too quick too soon, that's when it could go wrong. In my eyes, I've been at clubs that that's happened to. So that's that. I just wanted to add that. Sorry. Thank you. Which leads me on to obviously, sorry to bring a downer to the to the event. No, no. Obviously, you're, you're aiming for the Premiership uh, eventually. Um, well, about the minute everybody aims every, for the Premier League. Yeah. But at the minute, yeah. you're at the bottom of the table, fighting above the budget that, you, that you've been currently working under the last six months. Yeah. Are there any plans in place if the worst does happen and, and you are relegated? Are of course, and that's why I said, you know, when I'm looking at, at the decisions I'm making, it's for the benefit of, and the long-term stability of the club. So, you know, provisions in, in, in contracts upon the eventuality that we do get relegated, it, it, that's part and parcel of football. You get relegated, you, there is a possibility you can get uh, promoted. You have to, you have... To have you know, contingencies in place for, for, for all situations. So, you know, as I quite as I said in my interview the other day, we're not going to go out and start spending ten million pounds on players here and there because it's not sustainable. You know, as the income from the club increases, as will the costs. But then there needs to be provisions in. So, if you know, if we do get relegated, I I honestly believe under league we will not get relegated. I honestly believe that, and. Uh, we're trying our best to keep up, keep the best players. As I've said, Lyle is not for sale. If he, you know, if, even if he doesn't sign a new deal, he's here until the end of the season. Over to Lee, one second. Um, does part of you just want to get on with managing football? Because that's where you came in for. You've seen everything, it seems, mm -hmm. in the last two, two years, uh, yeah. from ownership to players leaving, coming, going. Do you just want to get your head down and start managing footballers? Yeah, and... and to be fair, that's what I've tried to do. I don't know how many times you, you've asked me the same question time and time again. Like I look up, it, it's frightening, really. But my job is to win games, so I've tried to distance myself from the off the field stuff that was happening before, the best I could. So now, having the chairman and everybody coming in now. It, it puts a smile on my face because I, from the conversations we've had, I can see the club moving forward and I don't have to worry as much as what I had to before with what's going on off the field, you know. I can just concentrate on trying to improve the players and, and winning games. Just yeah, just one for Lee and Steve. Uh, what is the priority now? Are you looking between now and the end of the season to bring players in on loan, or are you looking to make permanent signings? Wait until the summer, and then see where you are then, because obviously it's been well chronicled, you've got an injury list as long as your arm, and you need more bodies in. Do you want me to? You can answer yeah. that, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, no problem. Okay, so we're trying to bring some players in, and uh, we've, been, we've been active, you know, already we brought Andre Green in on loan. But we've made, put a few bids in for maybe up to three other players in the last week. Sorry, Steve, are they loan signings you're talking about? Permanent. Sorry, yep. Permanent, yeah. And so, of course, you know, we're not daft. We're, we're near the bottom of the league. But it's not what we're thinking about. We're not thinking, oh, we better get this lad and that lad in to stop us getting relegated. I looked out, I looked out on the pitch there the other day and I see Johnny Williams training and, and, and Tom Hemed training and Chuck Sanike back training and Jake Forster Kasky back with the group. And then I looked over to the side and see Josh Cullen and Erhan uh, Nostuma as well back out there on the pitch. Now, these are good players and these will help Lee unbelievably. I think our job, me and the chairman in particular now, in this next week and two and three up to the end of the window, is to try and strengthen that even more. So them guys coming back and add some permanent signings and possibly a loan signing to that as well. So we are we are working on it. It's not that easy. I think if you have a look around at the whole division, the whole of the championship, there's not loads happening right now. You get a flurry sort of at the start, and we did. We, we had Andre right in the start on the first day. We were very close to signing another player just a few days ago, but just for whatever reason that dropped out. And we're working on two or three targets right now. Is it two or three, Steve, you're looking, or is it more? I'll be honest, I won't lie to you, at times there's like 10 targets to get three. And, that, and that's how it works. And so I won't tell you right now, we will have three lads in next week or the week after or the week after that.
but certainly there's a few areas of the team that we want to strengthen to help Lee, to help Lee and the boys, and we'll be doing our utmost to, to get them. Usual question on a Thursday, Lee. Well, it's not a first. How's uh, Saturday looking? Now, you've got a few more bodies back? Yeah, on, on the bench. Uh, Steve, just give you a list there, and three or four of them will be on the bench. Um, Johnny Williams was on the bench on Sunday. Tama Hamid was on the bench Sunday, so obviously they'll still be there. Um, Jake Forster Kasky is back now. He'll be on the bench. And I think there's one, one other, maybe. I keep Austin. saying to you, light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah. Well, it's the most important thing is when they come back, we keep them back. That, that's been the problem, that whenever they've come back, they've broken down. And, and, and I'm sorry, I, I can't control that. Um, but what I can control is when they come back and, and then we're, they're back in the side win, uh, playing again, then we'll start picking up points. I have no doubt. But that's not taking anything away from the players that have been playing now because they've been giving absolutely everything. And, and, I, and I feel for them to ch keep trying to pick them up and, and dust them down and, and prepare them for the next game, which is in like two or three days, which has been the, the, the crazy schedule over the last few weeks. So... It just shows how good our recruitment has been to, to be able to stay in games, to go away to Derby and, and, and to play against the good top sides in the championship and, and only lose when we have lost. We've lost by one goal, you know, and we went to QPR. And, and, and it just shows how good our academy is. The, the chairman was, was touching on it earlier. We've had four or five lads under 20 playing against top championship sides, top players. And they've held their own. But can they sustain that? That's that's a difficult thing. You can't ask them to do that week in, week out. And that's what's been costing us because you've got too many people in the side at the moment that ain't ready to play. I've said that a number of times. But that's not disrespecting them. That That's the reality of it. They're just not ready. But, again, these players coming back will only strengthen us. And then that's when we start picking up points. I have no doubt because before we had a crazy amount of injuries... We was in and amongst it up the top, so I know where to pick points up once so I start getting the bodies back. Back to you, Matt. Um, new era for Charlton. Do you intend beefing up the commercial department now to match that, to sell the club? For sure. As I, as I said before, I need to focus on increasing income and revenue streams, so that's all across the board. Commercial, hospitality, match day... As I, as I said, I put out a tweet, you know, come back. You know, a lot of fans have been staying away yeah. due to the previous owners. <laughs> you think you can do it? Yeah. You think you can lure them back? Yeah, it's not luring them back. Do you know what it is? It's Tempt them back. It's not even tempting them back. They should want to, want to come back. You know, we took 38,000 fans to Wembley. The support of, of the club is, is massive, you know. So we we should be filling the, this this stadium out week in week out. We play great football. You know, we've got good players. We're looking at bringing in some even better players. So you know, we will we will get back up that league. So yeah. The fans I've spoken to, because it's a new era, because new owners yeah. have come in want to do that. They want to invest in season tickets. They want to put money into the yeah. club in whatever respect. I think yeah. there's an awful lot of goodwill on your side here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, the fans have really welcomed us. And we are obviously going to invest into the club. You know, but as you said, you know, we need to increase revenues before we can increase costs. It's sustainable, it's sensible, and, and, and that, that's all we can do to try and move the business forward. Duncan Wright, the son. Um, question for Matt and, and also for Lee. In terms of the contract, what are we looking at? Uh, what type of length of contract are you looking at? Lee's and it, and Lee, are you looking for assurances before you agree to, to sign, or was it a case of yeah, look, I'm happy. It's just the finer points. Yeah, ten year contract would be nice. Um, <laughs> unlimited budget, that would be great. Uh, no, seriously, that, that that's something I think that we need to finalise. Um, like I said, I've not seen the, the offer that's been put across today. Um, but 
all I want to do is be here and help the club move forward. That's the, I said that earlier, and, and, and that's where I stand on that. So I, I know that the chairman, we've had some good positive conversations. No, no, yesterday was was the latest one, and and we came out of that room, and I'm thinking, here we go. Like we, while I was sitting there, the chairman was making offers for players. I went and drove somewhere last night to meet a player when we were just sitting there. So the chairman made that happen, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm like I said, nothing, nothing changes with me. Like I just, I just want to get going and, and and move the club forward. I, I guess the Charlton fans should be relaxed in, in in your encouragement and your excitement about it. They should trust in the fact that you're excited about it and, and what the chairman is telling you to be going out and and signing players or going for players. Uh, such a quick quick turnaround yeah because I think everybody sees where it was you know and and then when you hear all the positive stuff that's being said how can you not get excited about it so I, I'll echo what, what the chairman was saying like we want the fans to come back because they play a massive part they're part of this as well you know it was a massive part of last season and um, we want to all just come back as a family because like I said when I was here as a kid when I was playing here this, this club was was unbelievable it's a, a great club great tradition great family club and and we we all want that to come back together and, and, and everything that I'm hearing sounds positive when you mentioned you've been at clubs where they've gone too quickly mm. I'm sure West Ham would that be one of them where they tried to accelerate and oh, well, I could name three Go I on could then. name three West Ham was one yeah um, went crazy with money and then ended up getting in trouble Birmingham was the same and, and Leeds when I was at Leeds it, it, money was getting thrown around left right and centre and, and everyone knows and Leeds ended up in League One from the Premiership so it's a stepping stone don't don't, um, you, don't you, you can't take gambles because it there's a lot of people's lives at risk for me the people that's been around this club for years and years Chris Parks is still working here from when I was a kid and I signed when I was a little kid so you know that there's a lot of a lot of people that it's their life so I think we have to be careful like I honestly do and you're not willing to gamble no my, my, all I want to do is trying to get the best players and keep the best players because that's going to help me win games if we win games then you you move forward um I understand is I have to win games to bring fans back. Like that's what happened last season. We filled this stadium last season. Before that, when I first came in, there was ten thousand people coming to the games. By the end of the season we had twenty seven. So I have no doubt with the team that I have around me, I have a great team around me and we will all be working our hardest. I said that to the chairman the first time that we met. I have a great a great group and, and we will give our all because we all care about this football club. Need a mic. It's right, Amy, for my TV. Do you mind just clarifying how long the deal yeah, is? Yeah, sure. It's, it's from the outset, obviously, our, our intention was to come in with a long term strategy. So, with that in mind, Lee's been offered a five year deal uh, because I feel that that gives him uh, the opportunity to grow with us and, and build with us. Like I, I mentioned about the academy, we bring players through. You know, I've asked Lee. I've, I've said, I, I want you to go down. I want you to, you know, have a look at the 16s. Have a look at the 18s. You know, you might see a, an under 16 playing. God, you know what? You can come with me. You know, when you're a young player and you see the first team manager there, it gives you that bit of confidence. You know, so I, I, I said in my interview, you know, we need to be category one within three years. That, that's realistic. And that's f building from there is how we're going to build it sensibly and sustainably. So, yeah, Lee's been offered a five-year deal um, because I, I think he's the person that can. I, I believe he can. He can really, really be successful at this club. Final question from Tony. I think. Yes, Matt. Sorry to be a pain again. F promise. Final question. The future of the training ground. Do you have any plans to develop the training ground? Yes, we do. So we've just had um, planning approval 
for a new training complex. So um, on the old site, on the Sparrows yeah, Lane, on yeah. Sparrows Lane, yeah. So we've we, we've uh, and that's an integral part of us, you know, taking it from category one to category two. You know, you you need you need the infrastructure in place um, as part of the long term plan. You need Lee needs a base. Lee's going to have a lot of input into it. Um, he, when we're looking at signing players and players are coming down, you, you want to be proud of the the environment they're working in. You know, other clubs, even clubs in League One, have got you know big big infrastructures that we're actually competing with, not in terms of of, of league level, but in terms of the facilities. Um, uh, obviously, not location, but we want the best opportunity to bring in the best players uh, and the best environment for for the first team to. And, and the academy to develop in. Can you elaborate on what you propose doing now? In terms of on the training ground, what are you going to build or demolish things, or what are you going to do to it? Yes, it is, I believe it's public knowledge. No? Is it not been published? The plans? We've had plan. We've had. There's been plans in place from the previous owner, and you can see that as you walk into the training ground. Actually, yeah, yeah, you can see that, and uh, that, that's what. Uh, the new group is going to start start working on. I don't know exactly when, but it has been. We've we've talked about it quite a few times in the last couple of months. So the the plans that have been approved are for a two story. Uh, having looked at it uh, and obviously had input from the, the, the other members of the board, we feel that a three story, as per the the, the drawings, um, would be beneficial because it's got accommodation areas. You know, when players are coming in. Um, Keeping the players, it, you know, it, at the training ground, it, they can relax pre-season. I remember, you know, when I was younger, if you're doing double sessions, you know, you might want to go for a sleep. You know, so the, the infrastructure is going to be there, you know, to bring in players, the, the best players, and, and obviously move the club forward. And that, that's all it's about, moving the club forward in the right direction. You know, as long as the club's in a better place when I leave than so when I got here. I'll, I'll be satisfied with my, with my job and the fans have got something to enjoy you know, ongoing. Pressure room with heating, Lee. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> We're getting spoiled today, aren't we? <laughs> um, just for Lee or maybe even Steve, just wondering if there was any clarity on Conor Gallagher's situation. Obviously, there's a couple of clubs who've sort of shown a bit of an interest. So do you, yeah. Can you say any more? Okay, I think the first thing to say is, what a good player, Conor Gallagher. We're so we're so pleased with how well he's done. Chelsea have been superb to us in lending him to us. It is a season-long loan. We've had different people from Chelsea come in the last few months, and they are very very pleased with his progress, and, and, and we are too. And so we want to keep him to the end of the season. Of course, it's uh, he's Chelsea's player, and uh, there's a there's a recall inside of January, so they can call him back. They've not indicated to any of us that they will do that, and so of course I've seen also little you know bits in the in the papers about clubs being interested in, but I'm not really surprised at that. As far as we're concerned, he's going to stay with us, and I think Lee would be unbelievably keen to keep him with us. Lee? Yeah, and and for me, being an ex-player myself, that. I believe, and I'm not just saying this because he's here, I believe this is the right place for him to develop. He's had six months and, and he's had highs and lows, and, and that's part of the game. So, yeah, you, you want to enjoy winning and you want to look after the player, but at the same time, you, you need to turn him into a man, and that's what's happening. Um, he, he's getting tested in, in all different ways. Um, the winning side, the losing side, the, the, the physical side. And, and at the moment, in an ideal world, he would have a little rest. But we can't do that with him at the moment, but he will be getting a rest once others come back. But the most important thing is that, same as all the other loans that have come here, whoever's come here has left a better player. So Christian Billick, he came to us last season and Arsenal sold him for ten million in the summer. Was Christian Billick a ten million player when he turned up in the summer before? No, he wasn't. So Josh Cullen has improved immensely. Um, who's the other loan, Steve? That we've we've brought in. 
Well, Andre, obviously, in, in just in Andre the last, now, yeah. yeah. So in the, in the short but, term. But all the players that, that have come in, that, that they've all improved, whether they're permanents, whether they're loans. So for me, looking on the outside, i.e. Chelsea, this is the perfect place for him. He's close to home, which is important when, you, when you're young. So everything just fits. He's going to come here, he's going to keep improving, he'll keep scoring goals, and he's going to be going back to Chelsea a better player. Like John Lecker and Sanfield, John Lecker, Lecker and Sanfield. Yeah, they, these are people like they've they've all they've all improved. I can give you a big massive list if you want, but but the most important thing is that he's here and he's learning. 